to try one more posture. This is known as Brikshasana, tree pose. Okay, so we're gonna try to be strong like a tree. Okay, we'll start on the left leg because we did that before. So starting off on the left leg, you're gonna take the right leg, externally rotate the hip, meaning the hip is going to move to the side. Okay, you can keep the foot here and balance. But if it's accessible, catch hold of the foot and take it a little higher up. Okay. Notice that I'm just looking at one point. I'm not looking right and left. Hands at the chest and five breaths here. One, two, steady. Three, four, five. With control, exit the posture. Hands on the waist, bend the knee, leg down. Let's do it on the other side. Left leg bend, wherever it's accessible for you. So if you're here, no problem. Keep the foot there and try to balance. Use a wall support if you need it, okay? And then if it's possible for you, take it a little higher up and let's hold it here. Externally rotate the hip to the side, hands in pranam, look at one point. One, concentrate, two, put the weight on the big toe, little toe, heel of the foot, three, Try to smile, four, and five. Release the hands, release the leg. Shake out the legs. By standing straight with your arms on your sides. While inhaling, bend your right leg backwards and hold the right ankle with your right hand. Extend your left arm straight out in front. Try to move your right leg upwards as much as you can. Hold this posture for 20 to 30 seconds and keep breathing normally. Slowly come back to the starting position. Repeat this with the left leg. Benefits of Nadrajasana Strengthens legs, hips, ankles and chest helps to reduce weight, stretches the thighs, groin and abdominal organs, improves digestive system, releases stress and calms the mind. Sitting on your heels, slowly move on to a table. Exhale and lower the hips to the heels and forward on the floor. Have the knees together or if you are more comfortable, spread the knees slightly apart. The arms can be overhead with your palms on the floor. Palms or fists can be stacked under the forehead. Or arms can be alongside the body with palms up. If you feel that your knee is hurting or if you are unable to sit on your heels, you can keep a bolster or blanket between your legs and then do the pose. Or if the top of the foot is stretching too much, then the bolster can be placed just below your feet. Remember that this is a restorative calming pose, so find what works best for you to relax. Breathe slowly and deeply, pressing the belly against the thighs on the inhale. So for this, you have to go on your all fours, your arms directly below your shoulder, your knees directly below your hips. Now first position here from here you're gonna go down towards the floor so when you're going down to the floor I'm not gonna just completely fall onto the mat I'm gonna use my strength of my arms to control my movement so my elbows are bent 
and I go down to the floor completely. So when I'm here, you can watch my arms. My arms are slightly behind my chest. I'm not here. This is for Bhujangasana preparation. I'm going to go slightly backward from here. And my shoulders are not in front. My shoulders are going to be back. And my scapula, your shoulder blades, going to be together and your chest should be open. Now from here, you're going to lift yourself up. This is the first preparation for Uddha Mukha Svanasana. From here, you're going to straighten your arms. Make sure your shoulders are back and you lift yourself up and your knees are still on the floor. This is not the final pose. This is the first variation of Udva Mukha Svanasana. Now, after you come here, now slowly lift your head up and look up. I'm not going like this. I'm trying to lift my chest up. So do not squeeze your shoulders in front. If you're going to squeeze your shoulders, that means you don't have enough strength in your arms. So for that, you can just do Bhujangasana. If you want to develop more strength, I want you to keep your arms straight. Rotate your shoulders back and lift your head up. This is the first step. And slowly, when you come down with control, you come down towards the floor. The second variation or the final posture is going to look like this. So you inhale. Drop your head down, make sure your neck is loose, shoulders back, scapula together, chest open and come forward and up. Now you're going to lift your knees off the mat. You lift your knees off the mat, you lift your chest up. This requires a lot of strength to hold here. So if you're not comfortable, do the variation one where you keep your knees on the mat. Drop your head back, rotate your shoulders, lift your chest. Squeeze your thighs. As you exhale, go down to the floor. Now push yourself back into child's pose. Now as you inhale, come up. So first up, we're going to start with my favorite Marjari Asan or the cat cow where I stack my wrist directly under my shoulders and my knees are directly under my hips. The thighs are perpendicular to the ground and from here taking a deep inhale, opening towards the sky, curving the back, the entire spinal column, feeling a good stretch and Protract your shoulders, toes pointed outwards, both the hips equidistant. Pressing and pushing the floor away. This asana should be practiced by everyone irrespective of their age groups. And the best part about Marjari asana is that it's working on all fours at the same time, not just on your spinal column, but also any kind of postural deviation if you have because of long seated or long standing hours, it corrects that. Working on your thoracic lumbar and tailbone area all at the same time, easing out your pain, opening up and warming up your digestive organs, wrists, shoulders, legs, toes all working at the same time.